Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of the Leo Beck Institute, and um, the title is telling that um, I want to provide context to uh, the person and the, the whole enterprise of, uh, of this conference. And um, so I want to start with this uh, image and um, um, with this rather strange picture. And um, what is it? Um, who are all these people? You know, and we will come back to that uh, later. Among the second generation uh, refugee historians, uh, George Lachman Mosse stands out uh, with his productivity and originality. What enabled George to produce that output? I think we need to look at his background. There are only few, if any, of his fellow historians who come from a similar background. The Mosse family can be seen as a symbol of a short era that short stretch between 1871 and 1933 of rapid rise within only one generation and to be destroyed in the next. I show a few pictures of um, Rudolf Moss's family. Here are his male siblings. Those are the names, and we'll come back to some of them. And here are his sisters. A very large family, and here are the names of the sisters who all married into um, prominent German Berlin Jewish families. I think none of the names ring any bells any longer. Berlin as the center of that period is now the museum of that meteoric rise and fall, which now, um, 150 years later, has become a place that tries to remember that time that seems so unimaginable. I cannot go into all the details. I assume people here have a sense of what I'm talking about. Actually, there is the account with all the details. Uh, Roger mentioned a book about, uh, about that family by Elisabeth Kraus, but I'll come back to that later. The title of the German edition of George's memoirs um, is Aus Großem Hause, which is not a reference to the nobility of the Mosse family, which that title would usually assume, um, but it is a business to the reference empire of the Mosse company. And this is a title page of an article that George's cousin Werner published in the Leo Beck Institute yearbook in 1959. I come back to the later as well. Alfred Schwabacher, there are many names that need to be mentioned. Alfred Schwabacher, who worked for the company from 1901 until 1939, um, and who after 1933 saved what could be saved uh, with the Zurich branch of the company, remarked in a letter to the editors of the Leo Beck Institute yearbook in response to Werner Mosse's article on Rudolf Mosse that the company could not have functioned without Emil Mosse and more about um, what Schwabacher had to say in the printed version of the lecture. I mean, this gives only very short uh, time for it. Um, and Schwabacher's memoirs give many more details. And I have to point out, in contrast to uh, Peter de Mendelssohn's um, rather dismissive book on um, the company and um, actually George's father, father and, and successor to Rudolf Mosse, Hans Lachmann Mosse, in the book um, Zeitungsstadt Berlin, 
Rudolf Mosses and Emil Mosses grandsons, George Schlachmann Mosse and Werner Mosse, came to the topic of the era of the Great House of Mosse, that is from the late 19th century until the Hitler era, around the same time. George from a cultural point of view, Werner from an economic side. In a letter from George to Werner after the latter had published his article on Rudolf Mosse in the LBI yearbook in 1959, George says, I quote, I'm delighted to read for the first time an account of Rudolf Mosse that makes sense. And I will elaborate more about all of this in, in the printed version uh, that, that will be coming later. George Lachman Mosse was born in 1918, the same year that his cousin Werner. Uh, both became historians. Both started in fields other than what they eventually became famous for. George had started in early modern English history, Werner in Russian history, and both of them found their ways to topics related to the milieu of their families, George in cultural and intellectual history, Werner in economic history. They were in contact, communicated with each other, planned conferences, and were interested in the family history. And it's interesting to note that George did not mention this in his memoirs, um, at least as far as I could make out of it. We don't know much about Werner's upbringing. Actually, Werner was named after his father's brother, who died early in World War I. His father, Werner's father, Rudolf S. Mosse, was named after Rudolf Mosse, and he died um, right away uh, in 1933 under the Nazi terror. But we know plenty about George's upbringing. But back to the family and the milieu. Rudolf Mosse's next younger brother, Albert Mosse, was another matter, not in business, instead the first high-ranking judge in Prussia without conversion, and that actually goes for the whole family, it seems nobody converted ever, after he had worked, this is Albert, after he had worked in Japan, Roger mentioned this, and early in the early 1890s to consult on the new Japanese constitution. And he was honored with the highest civilian cross of, of that uh, regime at the time, which is in the collection of the Leo Beck Institute. Among the children of Albert Mosse were Dora Panofsky, Marta Mosse, and son Hans, who also died in World War I in 1916. It should be noted that Albert Mosse had insisted to serve the fatherland in the Franco-Prussian War in 1870, despite his bad eyesight. And here he is seated. But even more about the immediate family, it was the milieu around the turn of the century and thereafter that needs to be looked at. The Mosses were newcomers who married into older Berlin Jewish families like the Lachmanns, George's father, Hans Lachmann, who took the name Mosse, Hans Lachmann Mosse. The Lachmanns were business people and major supporters of the Berlin Jewish community and founders of charities for the poor. Albert Mosse and Emil Mosse were married to sisters from the Sigmund Meyer family, wealthy silk and textile manufacturers, and it needs to be mentioned that actually Moses Mendelssohn, aside from his philosophical business, uh, was in the silk manufacturing business, first as an accountant and later as a partner in the company. So this has all a long tradition. Albert Moss's daughter, Dora, 
married Alvin Panofsky, the art historian. The Panofskys came originally from the liquor business in Silesia, and his uncle Eugen was a major banker in Berlin. In his memoirs, George talked about the long shadow of Rudolf Mosse, but it is that whole milieu that cast a long shadow, which George and Werner had a clear understanding of, they had a feeling for it. Um, actually, Walter Lacour, in the English edition of the, of the, uh, the memoirs, uh, remarks on this. However, the history of this milieu is by and large forgotten, and only historians are aware of the significance and impact. The history of the Mosse family helps to remind us of the richness with all the references and topics of the history of that milieu which was destroyed and buried after 1933. In the slideshow um, of the DHM that I think will come up in the next couple of days, we will see reflections of that milieu. The Lachmann Mosse Villa in the Maßenstraße, I think you had a picture of that already. The Mosse Palais on the Leipziger Platz, the company building in the Jerusalemer Straße, the Mendelssohn Voga, I mean, by, built by the architect Mendelssohn of the Voga on Kurfürstendamm, which is still standing. Some of the buildings still dot the city of Berlin, but the memory of the Mosse name has been erased by the Völkische Movement, and that is where George's and Werner's, Werner's uh, uh, work comes in. The Great House of Mosse was celebrated in two Festschriften before George's birth, uh, first in 1892 for the 25th anniversary of the company, and then in 1917 with a volume that not only hailed the three protagonists, main protagonists of the company, Rudolf the founder, Emil the partner, and then the successor Hans Lachmann Mosse, but also listed the Central Bureau of the Advertisement Agency with over 250 branches in Germany and abroad as the main business. With an additional seemingly unruly number of newspapers, magazines, and specialized journals in medicine, technology, agriculture, and the law. The fact that this enormous enterprise was built within one generation and rose to such prominence, to such a level of innovation, catapulting Rudolf Mosse into the top rank of Berlin families, it compares to such names as Rathenau and other industrial leaders of that period of prosperity. In the 1980s, George donated a collection of 94 company histories to the Leo Beck Institute, mostly written before World War I, given to Rudolf Mosse on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the company in 1917. The whole collection was microfiched by the LBI with great enthusiasm in 1988, but it found few takers. Peter Hayes, at the time at Northwestern University, um, who had just published his major Ige Farben book, was the editor of the microfiche edition. Remar and he remarked in his introductory essays to uh, the, the edition, it, I quote, it is striking how understudied the history of business in Germany remains. And I continue, on the eve of World War I, the German Empire was not only the economic powerhouse of Europe, but also the quintessential land of big industry, big agriculture, big unions, big banks, and big government. And he was quoting Paul Kennedy in the rise and fall of great powers, which said the comparatively high incidence of Jews also have become famously contested explanations. And Hayes continued scholarly examination of individual German enterprises or industries continued to occupy 
comparatively little space on library shelves. No single collection of sources can remedy this deficiency, but the one presented here will surely help. End of quote. That has changed with numerous company his histories and a general assessment of the Nazi period written since then. Uh, uh, cousin Werner had followed in that track and provided valuable studies for the history of the Mosse Company, starting with that 1959 essay on Rudolf Mosse. But the real innovation came with George Mosse's approach when he began to look into the other side, so to speak. In his memoirs, he quotes the conservative German historian Hans Rothfels, warning in a conversation in 1962 when he was about to publish an article about the occult origins of the Nazi movement. And I quote Rothfeld saying, lassen Sie die Hände davon, stay away from that stuff. As a witness to the time, George was beginning to investigate and as the heir to a short-lived dynasty, George had the uncanny sense of what were the underlying social and cultural forces of the time uh, of the rise of National Socialism. But that is something we will hear about in the course of this conference. However, what seems to have fallen short in the shadow, as it uh, also was mentioned, of Rudolf Mosse and his generation, may be to say shadow is given into hindsight. The rise of a business empire within only two generations rather shines a light that George Lachman Mosse was following since he understood what it was that had been destroyed. The various archival collections of the Leo Beck Institute archives give only a very fragmentary impression. And again, in the printed version, I can elaborate on this, but just as one example, there is the collection of the Jacobi and Kornick families of the cousin Theodor Wolf, who was the editor of the Berliner Tageblatt. A very early donation to the Leo Beck Institute, not by George. Whatever George donated to the Leo Beck Institute, along with the papers from members of the Albert Mosse family, is a mere glimpse of what once was including various objects like the Japanese pill or this Medici tapestry. One of the wall hangings, partially visible above the bookshelves in George's home office that we will later see in the slideshow uh, provided his, his home in Madison. And who else in Madison, Wisconsin, had original 15th century tapestry hanging on the wall, which provides some idea what it was that George grew up with. Along with what George donated, the DHM slideshow gives us a broad range of accomplishments, the Mendelssohn complex in Charlottenburg, the charities, the engagement in the Jewish community, the art enthusiasm. Hans Lachmann Mosse, was a member of the Gesellschaft der Freunde, the oldest non-religious Jewish association in Berlin. LBI actually has the minute book from its inception in the late 18th century. But Hans was also the chairman of the Berlin Reform Jewish community. And in the late 1920s, he sponsored the recording of the Reform Liturgy, uh, which was issued as a CD by Beth Hatfutzot in the early 1990s. I'm coming to the end. And that is what characterizes the milieu, the engagement of various Jewish families which the LBI is the repository of. When we look at the second and third generation after Rudolf Mosse and his siblings, we begin to see the wide ranging connections, the vast networks of families, Rogers, Roger mentioned this, that, and these networks of families were expelled or exterminated. The Mosse family story and a beginning 
and the beginning of a broader sense of the milieu George grew up in, we can find in that already mentioned Elizabeth Krauss book, the, Die Mosse Familie Deutsch-Jüdisches Bürgertum im 19. und 20. Jahrhundert, which she published in 1999, the year of George's death. This monumental account of 800 densely printed pages is an amazing study of a family down to the utmost detail. 20 years ago, Krauss went through all imaginable archives and information sources and came up with a picture of the social and intellectual environment and the personal networks and connections that give a good sense of the milieu George Lachman Mosse came from and which informed his own universe of ideas. I think it is necessary to understand not only the shadow of the family elders, but also to see on whose shoulders George Lachman Mosse was standing that, give, that gave him a clearer view of the vast field of inquiry. Thank you.